On this episode, we visit the Active Living Partnership in the Logan Square neighborhood of Chicago. Then we learn about the Sunday Parkways plan. We stop by the Interurban Trail in Cedarburg, Wisconsin. Finally, we talk with a public health nurse in Milwaukee. Stay tuned. We're in Chicago, Illinois, talking with Lucy Gomez Feliciano, who's the Chicago Project Coordinator for the Robert Johnson Active Living by Design. What is that? That is a project where we are using the community as a way to get people uh, to be more physically active. We're looking to uh, look at the grass at a grassroots level, looking at how the community can get residents to be more physically active in their daily life. Not necessarily signing up for the Y, not necessarily signing up for private um, fitness clothes, but really looking at how you can walk more, how you can ride more, how you can be more physically active as part of your daily routine. Uh, Chicago's a big city. What part of the city are you tackling? We are focusing on a small section of Logan Square. Uh, which is in the near north side of Chicago, uh, predominantly Latino community. And w a lot of our work is based out of the families in their schools. And you've been talking about the five P's. Five P's. And what not, are the five P's? And not the ones you eat. Um, those are good for you as well. Um, the five P's is a model based on the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation's um, Actively My Design. Uh, it's preparation, promotion, policy, program, and physical project. Um, and it's, it's, it's a model being tested to see if those five elements um, over five years create an environmental change, physical change, social change in the community um, so that people are healthier, more active, and um, more engaged in uh, have, living healthier lives. The, the five P's, uh, the first one is preparation. That's right. What's involved in that? In preparation, we look at establishing a partnership with the key stakeholders um, that would be instrumental in getting um, our communities to be more um, active. For us, that means schools. We were working with four schools. It means working with other community-based organizations like the Boys and Girls Club, the YMCA, working with Chicago land level organizations like the Chicago Land Bicycle Federation. Um, we work with the police department because having safe streets is key for our community to feel safe um, being active uh, on the street. Um, so those are key players in this five-year project. Uh, next one I believe was promotion. What have you been doing with that so far? Promotion, where as we have kind of started to identify what all our initiatives are, we're going, we're in the process of identifying what, how we kind of unify all our initiatives into one campaign that when we say active living by design, um, people know what we're talking about. Um, so we're, we're in the process of developing a campaign. And the next P was? Uh, P is policy. We want to make some change that's long term, not just a program for 10 weeks. We're, we are working on reinstating recess at one of our schools. So we're doing some research, some uh, focus groups, um, making sure that this is something everybody at, a, at one of the schools uh, wants and doing whatever is necessary to um, get recess reinstated. As a child, I had recess as a child. Most of us had recess as children. And unfortunately, most of our Chicago children do not have recess, and, but they're required to, to be better learners. But physical activity is key to learning. And the fourth P? And the fourth P is program. Um, where we are working to create a social environment where residents um, are helping each other learn things that are related to physical activity. It's an asset-based model. It's about if I know how to fix a bike, um, I offer classes at no cost, workshops to the, my neighbors. And if you know how to garden, that you would share your skills and knowledge with me and the rest of the neighbors and there's this uh, 
natural uh, social environment of mutual help. So we're in Spanish, we would call that ayuda mutua. So we're getting ready to do our train the trainer so that we make sure that our teachers are going to be successful and everyone's going to be feel, feel good. And eventually people are going to naturally know who knows how to do what, and they won't need me to bring them together. It would just, you know, we're hoping in five years that would be uh, a natural thing to happen. Um, the other P um, is, is, is a project, a pilot project called Go Healthy, and we're um, working with the Chicago Land Bicycle Federation to, uh, if people want and ready to uh, do alternative uh, routes to getting to and from school, that there would be a consultation, a one-on-one -on -one consultation of routes to get if you want to walk or ride your bike or take public transportation, what's the best route to get to and from a particular site from your home to work, from home to school, um, home to grandmas, um, so that there would be that consultation um, to get less cars on our streets and more people on our sidewalks. The, the, the third thing we're doing program is we're promoting walking school buses. So we're looking to, uh, through AmeriCorps, uh, we're going to have a parent working with three schools to coordinate uh, walking school buses and really celebrate walking and really build community where parents and, and, and children are walking together and our streets feel safer and our parents feel better about letting our children walk and reducing the number of congested cars parked around schools during entry and, and dismissal. So we're very excited about leaving our cars at home and, and getting our feet on the sidewalk. And uh, We have a high asthma rate in our community and we really believe that this is going to help um, start reducing some uh, of the asthma uh, attacks that a lot of our children are getting due to some of the environmental issues. And uh, the fifth P of the five? And our fifth P is as behind me and that's our Bloomingdale Rails to Trails project. It's a long-term project, it's five to ten years and we're looking um, to advocate to make sure that it happens. It's two and a half miles long. You're looking at the western end. Um, it would go two and a half miles east to the Chicago River. It would be a Rails to Trails project. It's also considered a linear park. Uh, Logan Square has a, a small amount of green space available to its residents, so we're really excited that this project would, one, take us off uh, the streets so that we can ride and jog and uh, walk, push our buggies, and, and have a wonderful view of the community. It also brings four communities together that don't always naturally come together, so this is really kind of a common ground for building community, for getting our exercise and doing it in a safe way. Um, and we think it will be spectacular because it's really a unique project. I know the Highland in New York is getting ready to break some ground and we want to be right with, behind them um, in getting our project off the ground. If I were to come back at the, the end of the five years that uh, Robert Johnson gives you for the uh, active living program, what would you hope that I'd, I'd see in this community? Well, I hope you see some of our trail up behind me, the Bloomingdale Trail, up and running. Um, and we're going to see uh, less cars around our schools. Um, we're going to see a, a, a policy piece I didn't refer to earlier called the Sunday Parkways, and that's on Sundays closing our boulevard system for five hours each Sunday, um, allowing um, people to use the streets as a means of uh, getting out and feeling safe. Um, so we hope that that will be up and running. Um, we hope that uh, that people will know their neighbors and, and think about their neighbors' health and encourage them to be healthier. We're in Chicago talking with Carlos Corta, who's a community liaison with the Chicago Land Bicycle Federation. What is the federation? Okay, the Chicago Land Bicycle Federation is a bi-advocacy group uh, that uh, have a, have a, um, the mission of improve the bicycling environment and in, in the Chicago city. But at the same time that we promote bicycling, we also promote walking and public transit. And you have a project you've been working on called Sunday Parkways. What's that? Okay, we are working in a new project that the name is Sunder Parkway. Sunder Parkway is a, is a, a put it like that, it's a big uh, 
healthy project uh, in Chicago that um, will involve uh, different neighborhoods around the city and also will involve, involve people of different age. Uh, we are planning to close a, a network of the street at the, um, the, the city of Chicago, Main Street, but at the same time we are closing the street uh, to use to be used for the citizens uh, every Sunday about five hours. And uh, the, the, those streets or this uh, network of the street will be without any kind of motor vehicles. What is the idea? To celebrate uh, active living here at the Chicago city, the, city, the people can use the street to run, to be uh, riding by, walk, jogging. Uh, doesn't matter the age, could be kids, could be youth people, could be adults, elderly, for discapacitated people. Uh, you will have a lot of activities like um, uh, have a, a fitness points. Also, you can have a, a kind of a yoga points. When I when I say point, is like stations, okay? Yoga station. You will have a, a gymnastics station. Everything that has to to be with the, the healthy and active life. And also we are trying uh, to involve in all these kinds of activities. Also, uh, um, I can say that um, habits that involve, how to change your daily habits and become more healthier through the physical activity, through your food and through the way how to you should to, uh, you treat yourself. Sunday Parkways is a big festival in Chicago to promote active living. How how do you organize something like this? I mean, does it come down from the mayor or up from the neighborhoods? Where how how does it, something like this get going? Well, uh, this program uh, it has a successful program right now happening in two different cities in South America, uh, Central, I'm sorry, and South America. Uh, Bogota in Colombia have the, the, the older one, they started 10 years ago promoting this kind of program and uh, closing the street every Sunday for people. And they start with just uh, 24 kilometers, and now they have 120. After um, Colombia, after Bogota, the second city that is running this program is uh, the Guadalajara city in Mexico. They start two years ago, and they start with 11 kilometers. Now that they are having 18 kilometers. The idea comes from these two programs. We are CBF. Chicago Land Bicycle Federation. We are pushing for this program, but this is a community program. It's something that never could be done if you don't have the community group or the different uh, community groups involved in this kind of program. Sure, we need the city uh, uh, support, but who will make successful is just the community, the people, the users of this kind of program. And you mentioned the, the cities that have done it, uh, you know, started small and worked their way up. Uh, do you have a similar plan for Chicago? Well, we have a, a three-year vision and we are planning next year, uh, we are talking about 2006, start shooting down the boulevard system. Uh, from Logan Square to Douglas Park, using the, 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 the how I, as I mentioned before, the Boulevard system. And in miles, we are talking about seven miles. This is our first year vision. Our second year, we are talking about uh, 30 miles. We are going a little, you know, a little uh, far north and south, okay, with a, a small loop also uh, passing through the lakefront path. And our third year, we have a, a, a really ambitious 
uh, vision. We are planning to have 60 miles of Sunday Parkways roads going north, south, east, west, east, west of the city, and at the same time having connection in between. The people can go to, to museums, can go to cultural center, can go to um, battery of neighborhood around Chicago City, they can go to the lake. Well, it's, it's something that, you know, it's, it's something that really, really involves a lot of effort, but the benefits, the people have to feel it. And it's just something, health. It's about being really active. And, you know, as I said before, you can walk, be running, jogging, riding your bike, going with your friends, going with your family, going with your kids. It's just to celebrate the health. We're in Cedarburg, Wisconsin, talking with Bill Knight, who's park commissioner for Ozaki County. What is this trail behind us? Uh, this is the uh, interurban trail. Uh, it's a, an abandoned uh, rail line that uh, uh, connected all the communities in Ozaki County with Milwaukee. Uh, it was abandoned in 1948, but uh, served, served the county and its residents very well up until uh, that time from the uh, late 19th century until 1948. You have this abandoned line, been sitting here for decades. Where'd the idea for the trail come from? Well, uh, actually back in the 70s, the county had it as a trail and for some reason it just, uh, they, they didn't make the improvements necessary to uh, generate a lot of interest and, and basically abandoned it after a few years. Some of the communities like here in Cedarburg and Port Washington and Mequon and Thienesville improved theirs, uh, especially Cedarburg, they did a lot. So then, then the county got involved and we connected. We, you know, Our job was to connect all the communities and that kind of brought them into this, this whole process where, where they actually went out and started fundraisers and going for grants and we all worked together then to to build this trail a couple of years ago and now it's uh, it's going from the southern end of the county to the very northern end of the county about 30 miles and it's just been received tremendously by uh, by the whole county and it's it's generated a lot of uh, commerce for the county there's a lot of visitors but it's also being used by the uh, residents of the county to get you know, from here in Cedarburg to Port Washington for work or vice versa or what have you. And uh, it's, it's just been used tremendously and it's been a great asset to the county. Now, what, uh, what's been set up to make sure that the, the trail continues to thrive? And, uh... Well, you know, we, we have this uh, advisory council that was formed right at the very beginning uh, on, on one of the coldest days of the winter of 1996 or 97, I can't remember for sure which, and now here we are on the hottest day of uh, 2005 doing this, but uh, it, it took that long to, to get this, uh, this going, but uh, now we have this. And, and what is it, what is it, who's on the council and what do they do? Well, the advisory council is, is formed by interested citizens, bikers, uh, our, our uh, Chamber of Commerce people from all the different communities along the trail and uh, tourism council members and, and what have you. And they, they've all gotten together and melded just great and divided all the duties to uh, make this a, a thriving trail. Where do you go from here? What can, uh, what, how can you hook, get this trail to, to work even better, to hook it up to the rest of the county or other counties? Well, you know, we have, we have plans to have branches off of this trail. Uh, as you, this would be the arterial and there, there'd be branches, you know, coming into this. Uh, Sheboygan County to the north is, is developing their trail and I believe they're adding about four miles in the next year or two. And, you know, we're already 
connected into uh, Milwaukee County by about a mile of trail there, which also connects to their uh, big network of trails. So it's, it, you know, we had got a good trail network going. Our original thought, you know, when, when we first started this was to connect Chicago to Green Bay and we were one of the missing links and that's, uh, that was one of the driving forces at the beginning of this thing. Is that a dream people are still looking forward to someday? I, I would hope so. I hope we're, we, we're successful at doing that. Many of the links are already in place. Just uh, 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 we have to connect them some, somehow along the way. So I think that will happen. We're in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, talking with Deborah Pasha, who's a public health nurse with the Wisconsin Division of Public Health. Just what does a public health nurse do? Public health nursing is a discipline that serves the community as a client. The, we look at, we assess through epidemiological methods and data, use of data, to look at what um, indicators there are for health problems, what the outcomes are, and, and to um, be strategic about where interventions and partnerships with other organizations would um, be useful to address health issues that are emerging and of, of significant prevalence. And when you look at a city like Milwaukee, uh, what, uh, what strengths would you see and what, what problems would you see that would need more attention? Milwaukee is um, a large, urban, very diverse city. Um, home to about 600,000 people and um, has, has been settled by many um, different ethnic backgrounds and communities. It's, it's rich in um, terms of the strengths of family and community being um, of importance to most of the people who live here. And at the same time, um, with the economics that have, have evolved and um, I, I would say creating um, a, a struggle in terms of, of economic support from businesses and um, even jobs that, that um, there are changes that wisely the, the people who um, govern the city of Milwaukee are are watching and addressing proactively in an, on an ongoing basis. So, um, the one of the major issues that is of concern has been of concern to me and others is the the um, burden of traffic that is occurring through the city, uh, um, both for the people who live here and use use single use vehicles to get places that they want to get instead of um, using public transportation or other forms of transportation like walking and biking to places in the city and in their neighborhood. So what has is, what is, um, occurred between the traffic that, that is prevalent because of the population who lives here and those who work here or travel through the city, um, who visit the city for its, its um, uh, many opportunities. We ha we have a, a lot of traffic on the road, and it's it's sometimes not our society anymore is not um, acting in a in a respectful manner of each other. We it's very common to see um, vehicles, cars, trucks, etc., um, barreling down the road without regard for e for the other vehicles, the signals. Um, or people who might be um, on foot or in a wheelchair or on a bicycle. And that, to me, is of great concern. Um, and I say that because in, with our current state health plan for this decade, we have addressed several um, health and systems priorities. Um, one that is directly related is the need for access to uh, the, the, the issue of overweight and obesity and the need for access to physical activity. And also another priority has to do with unintentional injuries and violence. And those have been assessed to be of major importance because um, through a scientific method, 
many priority health conditions that are very costly to treat, such as obesity, diabetes, um, complications of arthritis, um, cancers, selected cancers that occur from, from being obese. Um, those, co those problems are very costly to our society and are correlated with, they're related with um, a reduced quality of life and years of life. So, you know, when I look at the city of Milwaukee, I, I see that it's uh, uh, in, in many ways a very rich community in the people who are there, and yet we need to work together, agencies need to partner together with the community to address the very real perilous traffic conditions that are evolving. Um, the street that we're standing by is Appleton Avenue. It's one of the major arterials that angle through the city. Um, it also has some highway, federal highway designation, which um, um, could, you know, could be an issue in terms of, of what the limits may be in terms of calming the traffic. There's about 26,000 cars that go through this neighborhood on a daily basis. It's a very diverse neighborhood, socioeconomically, ethnically, age, age uh, ability, disability, and the people who live and work here are virtually unable to walk across the street or ride a bike to get to places in this neighborhood like the local businesses or church or school. Um, that's of grave concern to me because in the, in, the, in the decades that we have evolved to this level of traffic and the, the, the way that traffic is operating, um, we are losing a quality of life and even the ability to be healthy and safe in our daily lives. And what occurs with that, um, besides the costly medical um, conditions, is that people take refuge in their house or dwelling and are not out and about amongst each other. Visit us on the internet at www.pedestrians.org.